Welcome to the next video in the Trading Mastery Training. In this video, we'll cover Forex market fundamentals. And this video will cover the foundational thinking that will drive all of your Forex trade ideas. And I'll start with this concept first, and, and I've covered this before in the training. The goal of my training and the goal of this training specifically is to mold professional Forex traders who can reliably and consistently pull capital from the market. The goal of my training that I put together is foundational and it really has been the goal from the beginning and it consistently is the goal is that it's to design a fundamental trade system where you have an edge so that you can successfully, reliably and consistently pull capital from the market. Sure, you might enjoy trading, you might have fun along the way, but at the end of the day, what it's really about is growing your capital and doing that successfully and reliably. Now, one thing I'll say about this training specifically, the Forex training, is that it's designed for active traders. So I mentioned in the intro of the training that there will be different trade ideas based on different time frames and different trading styles, but I really designed this training for an active Forex trader. I know there's other training out there that cover, covers more of a passive role of Forex trading. I think the Forex market is the best market to trade because there's typically always some type of volatility that you can find and some place to apply your edge on the market. So let's jump in and let's get started. Now the first thing I'll cover is many people talk about the KISS method, which is keep it simple, stupid. And I subscribe to that concept. Here's some of the challenge with that concept with trading and specifically the Forex market, which is in order for you to create trade ideas that are simple, you have to factor into these ideas all the elements of how the market operates. And this is something that you have to own yourself. So it's one thing to go through the training and to learn a new concept and to learn new ideas, but it's another thing for you to actually see it unfold in the market yourself and trade it. Now, and, and I can't say enough, when you create these, when you understand how the market operates, the next step for most traders is to trade the ideas without fear and a very clear head. And I share that because this is something that you should keep in mind in all your trading is that oftentimes the biggest fear is the, the biggest challenge that a lot of traders have. It's fear on both sides, fear of missing out on profit, fear of losses, and then it's trading both sides of those with a very clear head. And what I'll mention in this is that one of the things that I've tried to do with my training and in this training as well is that once you learn these concepts once, you want to take ownership of them and you want to make them your own. And when you do that, you can then use these for the rest of your trading career. Many of the concepts that you're going to learn in this video cross over to multiple markets. So you learn these concepts within the confines of this training and you'll be able to apply them through a little bit of tweaking in maybe if you want to trade the futures market, maybe you want to trade oil, maybe you want to trade equities, maybe you want to trade options. Obviously those are within the same markets themselves, but they're in different instruments or different way to express your trade ideas. But when you learn these concepts, they apply to other markets. So I wanted to mention that just here ahead of time because I know this video is going to be a, a lot of concept driven. But if, if you've been through my training and my other videos, you know that what I tend to do in my videos is that I introduce you to concepts and then I layer them in throughout the training so that you have a high level pyramid view of it, kind of the bottom of the pyramid. And then as we move along to the training, we just start layering the concepts and then you see how it comes together as you go through the training. So with all that said, let's actually jump into the main content of this video. And in this video, discover Forex market fundamentals. I'll introduce you to concepts that will be covered in detail throughout the training. I kind of covered that a little bit a second ago. I'll highlight the important things or what are important for you to have in mind to have an edge on the market. And one thing I would suggest is absorb these ideas. Just think of them as high level concepts and rest assured, we'll get to all of them in detail as we move along in the training. But if I were to cover every one of these concepts with details in this video, it would be a three or four hour long video. Instead, I've broken these up into individual parts. So that's what I would suggest as we go through this. And I just mentioned that ahead of time because I think 
This video will be frustrating for some because I'll, I'll give you half of the answer. And for the full answer, you'll have to see examples and I'll have to explain them throughout charts and actual trades. Now also down below, you'll find a cheat sheet that you can download called the Forex Market Fundamentals. This will cover some of the key concepts that we talk about in this video, as well as questions that you want to answer. A lot of these won't make sense until you go further into the training. I'll also be updating these cheat sheets and creating more of them as we move forward here in the training. So you can definitely download that here. You can put it in a notebook or put it on the wall or keep it within your trade area so that you can refer back to it as you're developing your trade ideas and as you're actually trading. And I'll reinforce something that I mentioned before. I know there's a lot of concepts here and it might seem daunting, but it's much like riding a bike or swimming. If you know how to swim, I can throw you into a pool and you're, you're going to know how to swim. You're not going to forget it. If you get on a bike, you know how to ride a bike. So these concepts, once you've learned them and you've made them your own, they become that type of skill. It might take a little bit longer, but they, they get embedded into how you see the market. They get embedded in how you develop trade ideas and how you trade. So that's something to keep in mind as we move forward here. So let's talk about the market mechanics of the Forex market. Now, if you've gone through the other training that I recommended, you know that the Forex market is not centralized. And this truth alone really drives many of the behaviors and patterns that you see unfold within the market. Now, how I suggest you look at the market is that there's really two buckets of currency. And a lot of people suggest this as well, which is there are the US dollar pairs and there are the non US dollar pairs. We could get into pegged, unpegged, pegged to bucket currencies, pegged to commodities. I could really go in deep. We could make this a eight hour video around how to do fundamental analysis and how to all the macro and microeconomic factors. I've done all that and to be upfront, I use about 5% of that knowledge for the trades that are successful within the Forex market. So while we could have a great discussion about that, it really would be just here to make me sound smart. You can look up that if you want to understand what all this means. It's definitely something interesting, especially if you look at the history of the Forex market and you, you understand how it really works. But we're not going to cover that in this video. The one thing that I will mention is that the only trading one pair fallacy, it is a fallacy. It's all in your head. The Forex market is for speculation purposes. It makes no sense to just limit your trade ideas to a single currency. The Forex market needs to be looked at it as a market as a whole. It needs to be looked at as the, the market totality. Even if you know nothing about the currency, if you know nothing about even what, I'm not saying what country the currency is for, but if you've never heard of the currency before, it should not limit your trade ideas. That's one thing I would stress throughout this. If, you, if you're going to limit your trade ideas the, to the only currencies that you know, you're going to severely limit your opportunity. Because here's what it's about. Your role as a Forex trader is to speculate and capture volatility. That is your role as a Forex trader. You're not looking to hedge your, your business position for products that you sell. You're not looking to maybe travel to another country. And I don't know why this is even, why I'm using this as an example, but you're not looking to travel to another country and then buy the currency through the Forex market. You're looking to trade, you're, you're strictly a speculator. So as a speculator, as someone looking to speculate on the price movements of currencies against each other, your sole role is to capture the volatility and make profit off that. That's your sole role. Keep it simple there. Now to capture volatility, you have to first figure out the type of market movement that you want to capture. I mentioned that here because this is where we're going to start introducing some of these concepts. You really have to think about, well, do I want to be a scalper? Do I want to swing trade? What type of movements do I want to capture? And then you develop your trade ideas around that. And you should also base it on a consistent scheduled time that you have available. I say that because the Forex market has some really unique market movements to it. And you have to base your trade ideas and how you trade and what you want to capture based on what you can consistently commit to on a daily, weekly basis to actually execute these trades. The other thing that I'll mention 
Just in general, ensure your trade ideas are never static, meaning that we often get married to a trade idea that works really well or a trade setup that works really well. And you, of course, have to have enough trades under your belt to know that that works really well. But you should always guard against having that trade idea just be a static trade idea that you don't ever challenge. And I would suggest that on all of the type of trades that you do, especially in the Forex market, because it does change from time to time. There's sometimes high volatility times. There's low volatility times. A lot of that comes down to the actual economic factors that are driving these movements. But just ensure your trade ideas are never static. So now we're going to get into the core concepts and the heavy concepts around the Forex market. The first one to really understand is that currencies have no fair value. What I mean by that is there's no way to calculate what a currency is worth in relation to one another. Sure, there's very smart economists and other people that talk about how to do it. There's many reports I could point you to that show you how to do this. And there's theories that this is pegged to oil, this is pegged to this, and there's a certain aspect to that. But the best way to look at it is that there is no real way to calculate whether or not a currency is expensive or too cheap in relation to another one. There's there's theories, there's there's reasoning there's oh well this is happening in this country and then this is happening in this country and when you correlate these things together then obviously this is undervalued it's a waste of time there's no way to do it the other aspect of this and this is will come down to indicators especially some of your favorite indicators from the equities market or the crypto market is there's no such thing as overbought or oversold it doesn't exist in the currency market i'm i'm even convinced in some of this aspect it doesn't exist in many markets but that's probably another video for another time and what i really mean to, by that to clarify is that thinking in, in this overbought or oversold way i don't believe gives you a big enough edge to pull capital from the markets and the other aspect is this is what really moves market price is that the market makers and the algos in the forex market are consistently projecting both upside and downside value ranges to hedge positions, operations, risk, exposure, and more on a time scale that most traders barely consider. In one of the previous videos, I showed you some reports and I showed you some examples that traders that actually have the ability to move the markets, the, the things that they deal with, the, the type of transactions that they deal with. And you'll, you'll see a trend with those is that many of those, those type of decisions are at a a larger time scale than what you're most likely concerned with and what you're most likely trading at. That's actually what moves the market in a particular direction. And a good way to look at this, and those that are already in the training already understand this concept, so you're already there, is that the Forex market is in a current value range. And it's best to look at these as value ranges because this is the way the Forex market moves. And this is how you can project where the, the market might move to next, or it might test liquidity, but it's in a current value range. And the only thing you need to really think about is what's the next projected value range on both the upside and downside. And that's how the Forex market works. It moves from value range to value range. Another concept that I'll introduce you here is that I call it the MMR of the value range and you can choose which one of these words you like the best, mean, medium, or range. They kind of mean the same thing. I, I know they don't fully mean the same thing, but when I talk about these, I use these interchangeably because this is what the Forex market tends to do. It moves from the mean of value range of value range. And the one thing you want to ask yourself is, where are the two most likely middle range tests, both upside and downside? I know I can see a lot of people's wheels spinning already, especially if you're already in the training. You already understand this concept a lot because this is in the fundamental training outside of just the Forex market. But in the Forex market, it, it's actually pretty reliable. And it's actually one of the kind of key factors that you'll use in looking at whether or not you have an edge or there's a trade setup or a trade idea that you could execute. The other thing that you'll ask 
is have these areas been previously tested? I know these concepts can be frustrating because I'm not showing you examples. Remember what I said, you wanna observe these ideas and, and you can go and download the cheat sheet and have these ideas and, and, and refer back to them. But as we unfold ideas, they will be a lot more clearer. The other thing is that there is only two factors at play. There is strength and weakness and volatility. Now, I know you're probably saying, hey, that's three. Well, one thing I would suggest is that strength and weakness can be combined into one. I almost think that it should just be strength because there is weakness, but I would say that the, the easier way to, to make it or to visualize it and to look at it in the lens of the market is, is there a, a great amount of strength here or you could say a weak amount of strength. So it's really looking at this from a perspective of strength and weakness. So when you're looking at your charts, you're looking at it as a strength and weakness aspect and volatility. You want to always filter how you're looking at the Forex charts through that aspect because this will reveal to you precisely where the next value ranges have a high probability of being tested. Now you might say, well, why, why don't you talk about momentum? Why, why? Cause that's really what you're talking about. You're talking about strength and weakness. And, and I've heard in other training videos that there's momentum of the market. It doesn't turn. And, and I know I cover that in the training as well. One thing about momentum is it implies things will continue. So when, when you hear momentum, you, you, you know, that it, it, they give the analogy or oftentimes I've seen the analogy of, a train, it just doesn't stop on a dime. It takes a while to slow. I've used the example of an oil tanker as well. It's not exactly true in the Forex market. One of the things in the Forex market that you will always start doing is you must project where price is going to stop on both the upside and the downside. And when you get good at this, it will almost feel magical in some aspects because you will be projecting multiple times a day where things are precisely going to stop and where they're going to turn. And I can say this firsthand, you have to guard yourself from almost feeling like you know what you're doing. I'm not saying that you don't. I'm not saying that I don't trade my edge and I don't trade it with conviction. I do when I see a setup. I, I, for instance, today, if you're in the, the group, I, I shared I was going heavy on a U.S. Canadian dollar short and about Five minutes after I mentioned that, I was going heavy all morning. It just broke down. I projected the upside where it was going to stop. And as soon as it stopped there, I said, well, it's time to go heavy. It's time to trade this with conviction. My edge is in place. And it broke down for a 50 pip move. It's not bad for a morning. So I mentioned that just because I don't think momentum is the right way to look at the, the movements that you see within the Forex market. And to recap, on any price movement up or down, you want to be thinking what is the strength or lack of strength and what is the volatility? What are these telling me? And from that, where do I project the value ranges to be? And that moves us on to support and resistance. It doesn't exist in Forex. And what I mean by that is it doesn't provide a proper edge when trading the Forex market. I know you can point to charts and point to areas and point to trades where, look, clearly this is a support area and it was tested multiple times and it held up or it broke. And that was a, a signal for me to go long or go short. I'll just share this with a lot of experience. And, and I think it's a waste of time in the Forex market to the extent it does exist. I think you'll have a frustrating time designing good risk reward trade ideas around it. It's just not reliable enough and it's, you're missing the best high probability trades. If you look at the Forex market through support and resistance. So the best way that I suggest is that you understand the concept, you know, what support and resistance is and you see it and you understand when it does exist and when it does appear to work. But to limit yourself to that simple concept within the market will actually hinder you from being a very good trader within the Forex market. The other thing we'll mention is breakouts. Breakouts, most of them fail. 
this is across all markets. Most breakouts fail. If you just follow that general rule, you'll be a pretty good trader. If you know me, that I'm, I'm not the best breakout trader. I don't like to trade breakouts. I tend to be a not a contrarian trader, but I don't trade breakouts in the traditional sense that most people train how to trade breakouts. Most breakouts are liquidity tests. And we'll cover liquidity more in detail here in a second. But most don't fail where you expect them based on simple technical analysis. So when you look at breakouts and you say, well, it's going to break out here and this is where this, this potential false breakout will fail, it doesn't do that. And there's a couple really important reasons for that in the Forex market. We'll cover that in more detail throughout the training. But just as a general rule, realize that most breakouts fail. And if you trade with that concept, you'll be right more than you're wrong. And I'll also share an aspect of this because I know you can get into the minutia about breakouts and how to look at breakouts and how to say, well, it didn't really fail that breakout because it was a false breakout. You're missing half the trade if you are trading breakouts. That's what I'll suggest is that you're missing half the trade opportunity and you're, you're going to be very focused on a lot of moves that will be a waste of time if you focus strictly on breakouts. And that gets us to liquidity. The Forex market is in a continuous search for liquidity. So one of the things that you wanna always be asking yourself is where is the liquidity at? You want to say, where is the liquidity for future potential value ranges? And where is proof that that liquidity exists, that that liquidity has been tested, that the market wants to reach that liquidity level or that if there's, there's appetite for some buyer or a series of buyers or a series of market makers to get to that liquidity area. Now liquidity is an interesting concept. In a future video, I'm, I'm going to do just a liquidity video on the Forex market, but other markets because it's such an important concept and it works different in, in every individual market. So how you look at liquidity in the Forex market will be different than how you look at it in the equity market and how you look at it in the super exuberant and over emotional crypto market. Liquidity just, it, it's different in every individual market, but understanding it at a core level in the Forex market will help you transfer this to all of your trades, no matter what market you want to trade. So I will be doing a future video on that. The bottom line is if you look at the Forex market through the lens of a market maker and try to discover where the liquidity is at. Now you might not be able to test the liquidity like a market maker can, but as you start to think about where the liquidity is at, you'll start to see how market makers and the potential people that have to find liquidity are testing the market to hedge their positions, to enter positions, to, to do the multiple trades that they need to execute given the parameters that they're given. The next thing is key levels are very important in the Forex market. They're important in other markets. So always knowing these are important. That means the weekly and daily open, high, low, and close. Now, some of these are more important than others. And, and oftentimes there's factors that play into why these are more important than others but you'll want to know these. These are something that you should know in all of your trades anyways. The other aspect of this that we'll be talking about is inflection points, pivot points, and transient zones. Now, transient zones is probably something you haven't heard of. It's, it's quote unquote, a controversial idea, and it's a little bit hard to explain, but I'll be up to the task to explain why I think transient zones is, is a way to look at the market and how it helps you execute better trades. Now, in addition to key levels, sessions are also important and knowing and visualizing the market behavior by session is really important. So you want to start thinking like that. And really these sessions are the London, New York and Asian sessions. Obviously the London and New York overlap and the Asian session is kind of overlapped with the London session as well. But it's in that order and it's not for all pairs, but you there's different operators in each one of these sessions. And one thing I'll mention is that it's been shown that 
through every I've said this every six years or so, uh, the players in the the forex market get slapped on the wrist with a, a small little fine. I don't think anybody really goes to jail. I think there's a couple of people that's gone to jail for some of these things, but they get slapped on the wrist for coordinating certain behaviors that they shouldn't have coordinated. Now, the way they do that now is they are a lot smarter. They they know not to leave trails, digital trails, or even audio trails, and uh, because that's how some of them have got caught in the past. But they also telegraph some of these movements to each other through the market. I'm convinced of this. So it, it might sound like a conspiracy theory. Uh, I, I don't have absolute proof. So I haven't been abducted by aliens and brought up to the moon yet. But I'm pretty confident in a lot of the market behaviors are telegraphing to other traders, other algos on what they need to do or how they need to execute execute certain things without breaking the law. But the bottom line is that what happens within these sessions often telegraphs what's going to happen in later sessions or the overlapping session or the handoff, so to say. And a visualization of this, so you see this, if you haven't seen this before, but you probably have, is this is the time uh, of the session overlaps. And I didn't previously mention the Sydney session because I really think of the Sydney session in line with the Tokyo session. So for me, it's kind of the same session, even though that those pairs sometimes do behave differently because of that open or who's trading those. But you'll see there's a little overlap there in Tokyo and London. And in this graphic, it actually recommends that the best trading times is those overlaps. And that makes sense because that's when the majority of the market makers are executing trades or closing trades or making decisions in those overlapping periods. They're either closing out a position, they're they're putting in future trades, they're adjusting the algorithms. Remember, I, I shared that 70% of the market is algorithmic trading. And that's, well, I, I say that because it's algorithmic trading, but there's a distinction on, once again, execution and whether or not the algorithms are just free to roam and go out there and make trades and find inefficiencies within the market. But understanding these and seeing the price action on your chart in relation to these session times is really important. In addition to that, knowing the actual time and timing is another edge that you can have on the market, and that is the time of the day. So obviously, you know, there's the concept that people go to lunch. It's not exactly true anymore, mainly because true traders, they don't go to lunch, but they also, they hand over their trading to the, the quant that they've been working with or, or an algorithm, and it really executes those trades based on risk parameters. So while there is a drop-off, and you will see this in volatility, it's important to know the time of the day, but these these kind of normal rhythms don't have as big a role as they used to back when there was less automation within the market. The other really important thing is the time of hour. There is times when you will not want to exit a trade if you're within the 10 minutes at the end of the hour. And what I mean is the overlap, the 55 to 05, to zero eight, I would say that time frame of each hour is oftentimes where you don't want to enter a trade and you don't want to exit a trade. You want to wait for the flagging of that price action and to see what unfolds to then enter the trade. So a lot of times I might be close to a, a loss or maybe just a small profit and It'll be in that time frame and looking at the price action, the value ranges, and where I think the liquidity is, I'll make an assessment that I can hold out another five to seven minutes instead of exiting this trade right now, and it's going to get to a larger profit, and then I exit, or it's going to get to a point where I have a better exit from a loss. These are minute details. A lot of that is my scalping, but... Oftentimes, if I'm wrong, I'm out at the trade right away. But I also don't execute trades during these times. The other important time is sometimes 31 after the hour. I've got this from 
trading the markets. This isn't stuff I, I'm, I'm saying this because it's, it's uh, hard to explain, but I just didn't make this stuff up out of the air and just say, hey, these are some good ideas that I can put onto a slide and just talk about. I see this happen day after day, hour after hour, and it's, I, I see, I, I have a childlike wonderment for the market that I hope I never lose. So no matter how much my equity grows, how much capital I make, how much capital I'm trading with, I still have a wonderment that I am right and that I see certain things unfold in the market time and time again, and I trade them. I hope I never lose that. I think it's one of my edges. And I would recommend as you develop as a trader, you're going to get to that point as well. Every great trader that I've met or that I've, and I say met in addition to that I've studied through not only books, but YouTube videos and just studying, going beneath the surface and really understanding what makes them tick or how they're able to operate within these environments, they have developed through obviously learning, but trading the markets, a theory of the market and how the market operates, and that's their edge. And then they trade that without fear on both sides of the trade and with conviction. Every great trader does that, no matter what method they're trading. And that comes from putting yourself in that environment. It's, it's kind of a trial by fire. But if you do that enough times, you not become immune to the fire, but you learn to adapt to the fire. You learn to adapt to that environment. And that's really what I'm trying to convey here is that these, these things, you'll start to see them unfold yourself as well and use them as edges. Use them as additional factors in your trade ideas. So time and timing is really important. So knowing the time of the day, knowing the time of the hour, in addition, knowing the day of the week. There's a lot of theories out there that there's certain days of the week that flag the behavior for the for the rest of the week and where the direction is going. I, I, I buy into some of that. Sometimes it doesn't, like anything else in trading, it doesn't always work, but it has a reliable way to look at the market and, and to trade it, especially when you see it setting up a certain way. So knowing that though is important. I would suggest that you don't want to trade in Friday afternoon, unless it's highly volatile and you're doing some, some scalp trading. But other than that, it's probably a, a waste of time and you want to exit most of your positions or decide that you're going to hold over the weekend. But most of the time you don't want to be trading on Friday afternoon. So understand that the market's about to close in two or three hours. Save your time, do some other stuff. Do some other fundamental or, or technical analysis or revise your trade system. So understanding these things are, are drastically important. I'm sure most people get that, but in the Forex market, it does play a substantial role in the execution of your trades. And I know you're saying that's probably a lot to track. Look, I got a, the weekly open high, low and close, the daily open high, low and close, pivot points. What are these, these other things you talked about? These are really simple when these are outlined on a chart. I have indicators that I've created for these that, that are free if you use TradingView. So I have the weekly open high, low and close. I have the daily open high, low and close. I don't have the sessions one because I just see that on the chart, but there's some indicators like that in TradingView that you can get that will overlay the session times so that you can easily visualize that. So it's easy. The bottom line, and I say it's easy, it's like anything else. After you start doing it, you, you then adapt and, and it becomes second nature. But the bottom line, your trade ideas need to have a process for you knowing these items. So in your trade ideas, in how you trade the Forex market, you need to be cognizant at all times where are you at in relation to the weekly open, where are you at in relation to the daily open, where is the weekly high, where is the weekly low. You, these are things that you should not execute a trade without knowing precisely where that is, where that price is, and what happened around that price. Not only in the current session, but in past sessions and past recent sessions. 
so th- these are things that th- th- you just needs to be part of your trade system. Now, news. This is a big thing in the Forex market. The critical thing to know here is that you should always know the future news events that have a potential to impact your positions. There's a couple sites that I'll, I'll link below, but that I recommend that are easy to actually sort. You can add your own time zone. You can add a factor of whether or not it has a high impact or low impact. Bottom line is if there is a future planned news event, these are planned news events. If they have a potential to impact your positions, you should not trade these or you should get out of the trade. So really don't trade the news unless you have experience. It's it's better to get out one hour before to protect your positions. Oftentimes, even putting in a stop loss is probably not the best move because news has a tendency to spike uh, to liquidity ranges on both sides. And these are some of the best times to, to scalp trade. Uh, just last week, I did uh, with one of my one-on-one uh, students. I, I hate the word student. So I'll have to come up with another word. One-on-one people in, in the training, we scalped uh, a series of scalps together. Uh, I think it was uh, Monday night or it Sunday or Monday night. Uh, he's in another, he's over in Europe and he was going to scalp the uh, Australian dollar. I don't remember what pairs we scalped, but uh, there was a news event coming and he made me aware of it. And we pretty much over Discord direct messages uh, I set up the zones I was looking at, explained uh, the things that we were covering in the private one-on-one training. And that was actually one of his first scalps that I think he had a 30 P profit, 30 pip profit on that, on, on just trading that news. And to that point, what we traded is we traded the news, but you don't trade the pre news. So while I was trading the pre news a little bit, because I have experience to do that and I kind of saw where the market was telegraphing for the false move before it pulled back. Uh, You want to trade not the first impulse to the value range, but you want to trade the reaction. So I just share that in general. So I think trading news is, is a good strategy to have because once you understand how to trade the news, it can be a great way to get in and get out within 15 to 20 minutes. You can have a 30 pip, 40, 50 pip profit sometimes within 15 to 30 minutes of trading the news correctly. It's obviously not for everybody and obviously you have to adjust your schedule around when the news actually is released and trade it correctly, but it can be a, a good, a good trade opportunity. But in general, if you have a position open and there is a news event that's coming up, it's, 90% 90% of the time smarter if you think that there's going to be an impact on your trade position you just close that trade and I should mention as well that even if you don't think it's going to affect your position it most likely will in some aspect and to that point it's currently 8 43 p.m. my local time and the Australian uh, I think they announced the unemployment numbers at 8 30 my local time and I st- I was in the middle of actually recording this video. I stopped 15 minutes before and planned out my scalp trades. And then I traded that and I traded the impulse down for a short of about 15 pips and then caught that bottom and then traded the range up to about 16 pips. And then I'm currently in a position because I think that the overextension to the downside was the false move. And then it's going to come back to the mean to the top. So I'm currently long. But in addition to those positions that I traded, the, my other positions that I had open, I'm still short the USD CAD. I'm uh, long the uh, NZD USD. I'm short uh, the CHF JPY. All of those positions started to actually freak out as well just in a volatility range. Keep in mind, it's 8 p.m. at night, and generally the volatility doesn't spike like this. But the second that that news dropped, the volatility on the Australian pairs obviously spiked uh, in a 50p move one way and then made up 30p the other way. Uh, But also these other pairs also 
came alive as well. So it's often not just the news that affects your pairs. Now, the, the effect is typically not as great on not the, the immediate pairs that are mentioned in the news, but it's something that you need to be mindful of. And if you're in a position that's close or you're in a position that might be affected, often smarter to just exit those positions. Now, we'll cover that in a lot more detail here in the training as we move forward, but it's just something to keep in mind. And now in addition to the news, there is the fundamental analysis or analysis, as you can say it, to the Forex market. And what I'll say on this is good luck. I, I think that if you want to actually look at the theories around fundamental analysis, I do think that there's a place for it. If you're a fundamental trader, I've been in private training that filled me with more fundamental analysis on the Forex market than I ever think I would ever want to know. It doesn't guide my trade decisions, maybe 2%, 5% of trade decisions here and there. Sometimes I'll, I'll see something that makes sense and I, I might do a longer term play and have a longer term bias off that. But I'm not going to cover it in this training just because I think the fundamental analysis aspect that many people go through is just a, a waste of effort and time and energy. The one thing I will say is that you should never just blindly take someone's advice. And if you think that you have an edge on trading fundamental analysis, then definitely do that. But don't trade any fundamental trade ideas unless you have conviction and you have done the research yourself. A, a good illustration of this, or I think one of the best illustrations of this, and if, if you've seen the movie, The Big Short, and the book's great too, uh, so if you haven't read the book, the, the book is just as good as the movie. Uh, there's This is about basically shorting the housing market, and it's it's told in a pretty pretty good way, especially if you live through it. But the character that you see there in the bottom right, I think his name is Michael Brenneman. I really should have looked this up before. Uh, and he, one of the, there's a scene in the movie where, and, and I, if you've seen this movie, then, you'll probably remember it, but there's a scene in the movie where one of his capital partners or one of the people that he gets capital from basically is on the phone because he's bet the whole the whole fund on this single idea. And he's on the phone with the guy and he says, it's an absolute certainty. And the, the guy, of course, laughs. He said, how can it be an absolute certainty? How do you know that? And he says, well, I've, I've looked at it. I've done the analysis. And I've, I've looked at the mortgage documents. I've read the mortgage documents. And the guy says something to the effect of, no one reads that. He says, well, I have. And I'm telling you that this is an absolute certainty. It's going to fail at some point in time. I might be off on the timing, but it's going to fail at some point in time. And if you've seen the series of scenes, there's, there's a series of scenes where what he does is he kind of outlines his capital loss. I think the lowest it got to in the movie was 19 or 18%. And of course he ended up with a gain of 489% with a total profit of 2.69 billion. So not a bad return on a single trade idea, obviously high risk, but he traded it with conviction and that he was able to kind of go through the losses and to trade his idea and to execute the trade, set up the trade, because he had done the research himself. He had built a theory on what he expected to see, but he actually did it himself. It wasn't a, a kind of a, he read in a newsletter or read in something else, and then he did just a little bit of research. No, he, at least the way it's portrayed in the book and, and the movie, they actually did the research. They looked at the, the, they talked to people in the market. They went to events. They they actually looked at mortgage documents. They looked at the structure of everything. And it was, once they dug deeper and deeper, it was pretty obvious. So I share that because I do think that there's opportunity in fundamental analysis in a lot of things. I think where people get it wrong is that they, they do fundamental analysis in a haphazard way. And then they, they kind of, they get mirrored to these fundamental analysis and don't then bring in the technical side to then bring them to the reality of what the market's really telling them, regardless of the fundamental analysis they did. So if you can mirror those two, great. 
I just think that in the for in the forex market, it's it's way too much. There's way too many factors, and it's a waste of a lot of people's effort. Now, kind of one of the final things we're going to cover here is something called the baseline price value, and this is actually something if you can get not only in the forex market but in other markets, you're going to be a much better trader. What you really want is you want a smoothing indicator that helps you understand the market condition without the noise of a chart. And that might sound a little odd to say that you want kind of like a smoothing indicator. And, and the simple, the, the most simple ones are EMAs and moving averages. And the way that I explain this without showing it on a chart is that if you're in a trade and the price action is moving around, it's volatile. Oftentimes, what you can do is you can pick a series of two moving averages that you've come to rely upon. And you can use these moving averages and how they are actually sloping, where price is at in relation to them, where they are in relation to each other, and how that movement is happening, even in real time, but also the historical obviously average of that price, the moving average, you can use that to, I won't say calm yourself, but bring you to reality of what's actually happening. So you might see spikes here and there. You might see big volatility moves. But when you look at the moving averages, it calms you. It's kind of like a form of meditation, I guess you could say, on looking at a chart because it, it brings the reality. When you start relying upon them and looking at them correctly, you will either stay in a position or get out of a position based on what what not only the price action is telling you, maybe another indicator, other factors, but then the the calming factor of a baseline price value. And I say EMAs and MAs, those are the simplest ones. Those are really basic. In this training, what, what I suggest anyways is you pick two. So you pick two. It could be whatever two you want. It could be the 48 and 19. It, it could be, you know, the, the tried and true, the 20, the 50, the 200, whatever moving average you choose. Just pick two that you come to rely upon that, that brings you to the reality of what's actually happening in the market that will take the noise out of the chart. I'll share the market tested ones that I believe work in the Forex market. So I'll definitely share those and I'll share what time frames these work and, and how you should use these. So definitely I, I will share those, but you want to have a baseline price value indicator that, that helps you understand what is the baseline kind of value range of price that is unfolding before me and where, how does that frame my bias? I, you know, I, I hate, I hate diving into sometimes these concepts without showing examples. But once again, these are just introductions. Just keep in mind that more will come. We'll, we'll, when we get to the section and that when I mention it in future training videos, you'll look at it and say, okay, yeah, I get it. It makes sense. Now I see why you covered it the way you did. Now, in addition to that, I think that there's opportunity. I don't think there is opportunity for advanced smart baseline price values. And one of those is called the Frama. This is something to look on. It's called the Fractal Adaptive Moving Average. And I could read this, but it's basically an intelligent adaptive moving average uh, invented or developed by John Ellers. And it, it flattens a lot of this stuff. It follows price a lot closely than moving averages, but it's, it's one that I'm adding to my trade ideas. It's one that has made the cut. So I wanted to mention here because I think everybody should look at it and I'm actually testing it and using it in a lot of markets. So I'm using it in Forex, I'm using it in the equity market, a little bit in crypto, some of the other markets that I trade. The other smart baseline price value indicator that I think is good is called the McKinley dynamic. And this is a little known yet highly reliable indicator invented by John R. McKinley. Uh, he, he basically, and why I like this one too, is because it's, it's working with in the context of moving averages, 
but it's more responsive and it it adjusts itself according to the volatility and the speed of the market. So I'm not going to go into either one of these indicators because you can use Google to go out there and dive in as deep as you want. And I'm sure there's other videos out there and I'm sure I'll probably do. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do two distinct videos on these because in the videos that I've watched and a lot of the things that I've read, they're missing a couple key things that you can adjust with these that will make them even better for whatever market you're trading. But these are two that in addition to EMAs that I think will be your baseline price value. And then those will be your, those will help you with bias. Those will help you with uh, understanding whether or not what you're seeing on a chart and what's unfolding is, is in relation to the volatility and the historical price action. So these are two indicators that I, I do highly recommend. Now, another indicator is one, if you're in my training, I have specific indicators that I release just for training members that are exclusive for just training members. And one of those is the soon to be released. Probably by the time you're watching this, it's probably already released. And if you are in the training, you have access to it in trading view. It's called the super TSI. And I've already released the weekly TSI. So you have access to that now. So if you're in the training, you have access to the weekly TSI and Hopefully you've already put that through the paces and you've come to rely on that. It's a really good bias indicator. Now what the super TSI indicator is, is it's a multi time frame super true strength index indicator. It takes multiple time frames and it looks at the strength within the market and it provides a bull or bear bias in addition to a one to four rated potential for entry signals. So let me show you that here so you can see it. We'll jump over to the browser. So here we are in the chart. We're looking at the US dollar against the Canadian dollar, and this is the daily time frame. The indicator below is the super TSI. Like I said before, there's a weekly TSI that works as well. What this super TSI is used for is to help you understand the underlying bias of the market, meaning is there a bull bias or a bear bias? In addition to that, it will provide signals. So what you'll see here, and let's just take one We'll, we'll take the best trade here. So I'll cherry pick the trade, but this is an indicator that I use in my own trading. I use it successfully. I've come to rely upon it. It's one of the reasons why I'm releasing it to the private training members because it's, it's been a, I use it across all markets. So here's how this works is that if it's red, it's obviously a bear bias. And then if it's green, it's a bull bias. So upside bias, the signals that you see here, the one, two, four, one is a pro entry basically that means that you should enter a probe position a smaller position because it's the first signal two is potentially enter another probe position when you see a three and four that basically is a sign that you should get ready and go heavy as long as other things align now you'll see with just this indicator on the chart we got no other indicators nothing else this provides some pretty good trades uh, i'll give you an example if you would have took the probe position right here and said, okay, well, let's take the probe position. And then where's your exit? Just using this indicator. So this indicator is primarily a bias and entry indicator, but it also can serve as a good exit indicator. So what I'll share there is see that all the way through this run, the first time that it turned, and let's scroll in a little bit, the first time that it turned bearish right here with a signal and it had a one, two, and three, that was the sign that basically the bull run was over and you should exit any long positions you were in. So if we would have done that, and let's say we took the signal on the day of that close or day after that closed right here, that would have been a 671 pip run. So it's not a bad run, not a bad uh, trade. Now, obviously in the training, I would suggest that what you do when you get a one to three signal like this is that you go short and let's say you went short all the way to the point where it changed again. So here, right here, is where it changed again. So you'll see it turned bearish. And then here is the first reversal signal with a one and two firing that day. And if we go here, and let's say that you reversed, you basically took profit on your long and you reversed to a short. This That's a hard thing for a lot of traders to do, but that's one of the things I'm going to talk about a lot in the training, which is being able to change your bias on a moment's notice. 
if you can do that in Forex, you can grow your equity a lot quicker. It, it's it's something that once you once you understand everything I've covered in this video, it becomes a lot easier. But let's say you, you did that and you got out on that exit. And let's say here, just to be fair, let's say you got out on this day, you're a little bit uh, you you were a little bit more patient. That's a 280 pip move. Let's go to another chart just so you that you know I'm not cherry picking this. We'll go to the Australian dollar against the Japanese yen. And we see here on this trade here where all four signals fired. So one one way that this indicator works well is you want to see a long sustained move of one bias. And then when you get signals like this, where there is a strong signal bias, you enter on the next day or a pullback. And then here is a first sign right here of actually an exit. When you take an exit right there for 304. Now, if we go here and we say, well, that's a sign to enter as well. We got a sign to enter here. And then our first exit scenario, you could potentially take this exit here where it was a one uh, long signal within a bear bias. You could take that exit there. That would be about 500 piece. I, I, I discuss how to use this in, in the training. Another thing I'll mention and I'll just share is if we open up my scripts, you'll see I have a lot of indicators here that are currently in the test phase. We're currently working through it. I'll, I'll release some of these publicly, but a lot of these will be released just privately for people in the private training. One that I'm excited about is called the DXY Treasury Divergence. Someone in the Discord group, I, I don't have permission to, to name them, so it's shared uh, a strategy of the divergence between the DXY, which is the dollar index, against treasuries, uh, the the uh, five, I think it was the five, ten, and thirty, and or maybe it's the three, ten, and thirty. I, I'm not I'm not exactly sure on the numbers because we're still working on building this indicator. But this is the type of stuff that uh, that I'm consistently working on, and I'm releasing. I'm attentive to people in the group, but this is looking at the opportunity for when there's a divergence between those actual movements in the market and taking advantage of that movement to trade the dollar or trade the pairs against the dollar based on weakness or strength. So I think there's something here, but we have a lot of work that we need to put in to really ensure that it's something that's reliable and something that gives good trade ideas. But you can see with just this, I'll go to one other chart before we, we wrap it up here. If we go to the euro, euro pound. We see that it, it fired all four. When, put it this way, when something on my Super TSI fires all four signals like this, I go long. I, I take that signal, especially on the same day. So when that happens with this indicator, it's become one of my best trading indicators. I go long, and I got out way early here. I got out down here. So I didn't I didn't get to capture a lot of some of this upside move, but I got a little bit early on this long. But you'll see here another area where it fired all, all longs. And then you'll see on this one here where it went, a little, went through a little bit of chop in this range here. Obviously in a range. It fired one and two. And then three and four followed on. Typically, you'd already have a position probably here around three. You'd be getting ready. And then as it continued to break down, you'd be getting ready here. And then when four hit, that'd be another sign. Let's just say you just took four. You just said, look, I'm going to wait for four. You just took four. And then as the first reversal that really happened was here with the two. That was the first reversal that really happened. You could get out on these ones here within the bear bias, but this is the first one where there's a, a painting of a bull bias and a signal, and that would be 387 pips. One thing that I'll mention is on my algorithmic trades, or what I'm calling my algorithmic trades, which are really solely indicator-based trades and the trade system around that, it really is inspired by another YouTuber called No Nonsense Forex VP, and six months ago or so I came across his videos and I did realize that while well, I was primarily a price action trader that I was not using a lot of indicators in my trades in the Forex market and I really thought about it and I said I think there's something here so a lot of the algorithmic indicator trading that I do is inspired by some of his concepts I'd say about 50 percent 
I'm a more aggressive trader than he is. I, I trade the markets a lot more actively. I'm looking to, to trade within ranges. I scalp, I swing in addition to doing the trend trading that really he recommends. So really his, his concept is all about trend trading. That's, that's what you are. You're a trend trader. So you're looking to capture trends and trading on the daily time frame. I like that method. It's good. It's just for the type of opportunity that I have and the type of trader I am, I can triple my equity growth by actively trading in addition to this. So it's, it's just I'm a different type of trader. Great ideas, but I think uh, the what I'll cover in this training will cover some of those concepts. But I'm like I said in the beginning, the the training is really designed for active traders. You can do some. I do passive and active trading within the forex market. Both I have two separate accounts or sub accounts where I divide up the strategies, so it's very clear. But that, that is a valid strategy, or you can just do one. So as we wrap up the video here, I thought I'd mention my training. This is something that I don't do often. I know I do talk about it from time to time in YouTube videos, but I'll share just a little overview about it. I'll share some philosophy about it and I'll share how to get started. I'll also share the future of where I'm taking some YouTube videos. So we'll be doing some Forex stuff, but it will be really self-contained ideas within the Forex market. And then I'm going to get back to doing more generalized trading tutorials, things that I think can have a really big impact on people that are watching on YouTube. So my training, I've mentioned this before. I don't, I don't push this every single day and I'll share the reason for that. My training is foundational training that teaches you to fish and create your own trade system. So I have many hours of training already. And then what's we're adding here is the Forex videos. And really my training, the philosophy behind it is so that you can reliably and consistently pull capital from the market. But it's designed so that you learn how to read the market and develop your own technical analysis edge. I can't stress that enough. Even on the the videos that you see on YouTube or what I share in Discord, the philosophy that you should take from this is you should take these ideas and if you can test them out in the market, look in the market, but make them your own. So any idea you get anywhere, if it's in a book, in another video, another training, taking ownership of that idea and making your own is actually where you're going to develop your edge. And I've really designed my training around that specific aspect of helping people get there. I layer my training just like we did in this video. I, I typically introduce concepts and then as we get into charts, and as we break things down, I layer those concepts. My one of the things that drives me, and I'll just share this. I shared this before. I'm I don't ever want to get to the dark side, so to say, of training, which is where my training income even gets close to my daily trading income. I'm a trader. I say this often. The biggest hit to my equity curve often is the amount of time that I put into these videos and my training. It's, I just don't like to put out stuff that is BS or that stuff that I don't think is going to have an impact on people. I, and I, and I do it for a complete selfish reason. So one of the main reasons why I do this is selfish. It makes me a better trader. I have to think through these ideas and I have to think to how to communicate these ideas to, to people so that they can have breakthroughs and that you can think differently about the market. You can see the market in, in unique ways and then you can have an edge and going through that process, while it, I'm not actively trading or working on new trade ideas, it does help me become a better trader. Second to that, and I, I'm just sharing my first selfish reasons for doing it. Uh, second to that is I do like to see people become good traders. I just opened up one-on-one -on -one coaching and I did that for the same reason. I enjoy interaction with other traders. I like to see other traders grow but it's also helps me grow as a trader. I, I've found that the one-on-one -on -one interactions is just like the training videos and the YouTube videos that I create. You can get more information down below on, on how to get started. And I'll share this in the video because I don't think it's ever going to change. I've, I've always charged 0 0.07 BTC, regardless of what the BTC price is. I've always charged that. One of the reasons for that, even though I trade a vast array of markets and I, and I really have when I started this channel, I intentionally started with crypto because I just saw the opportunity there instead of just being another Forex person or another equities person. I thought I could start with crypto and then if, if it 
if it takes off and I enjoy it, then I can maybe add the other markets that I trade. But I have a heart for crypto. I believe in the idea of Bitcoin or the, the digital concept of it. And so I, one of the reasons why I've charged that and, and really not had a fiat price for my training is I want to support the motivation behind Bitcoin. So it's a market I trade every single day. I still think it has tremendous upside potential. So two steps here. If you want more information, you'll find a link to my website down below that has an overview of what's in the training. And then the side here is all of the modules that are in the training. Some of these have multiple videos. Uh, some of them have exercises as well. You can get a good overview. And like I said, we're just adding the Forex section. Pretty sure in the future, we're going to add the equity section as well. And maybe a few other markets here and there as we move forward. This is something I, I update every week. So I try to do an update, a new training video every week. The other thing that I'll share is that down below, you'll see a link to the Discord group. You'll definitely want to join that if you haven't joined yet. We have sections for equities, for Forex, and crypto. And I'm pretty active in there because I'm a full-time trader. So I answer questions. I really share tips and advice. And I share my trades. So you'll definitely want to join that down below. That's all for this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.